Hi Booktube, it's Missy. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my weekly wrap up for week 37. I think I'm on 37. If not, I will leave whatever number I am on in editing, on my screen, whatever. Um, so today is the last day of the Rib Sat, which is Read Your Bookshelfathon. And I had four books on my readathon, and I couldn't even do those four books. Um, well, I lied. I, I, I had, I had like four and a half, depending on whether I had finished a book or not. I did end up finishing this book during, uh, Rib Sat, but I already posted my review on it, uh, last week, Thursday, when I did my weekly wrap-up. So that's where you can find the review for this book. I will leave the link down below. Um, but I did read four books, just not the ones that were on my TBR, because by the time today rolled around, I just, I just, I couldn't, couldn't get into any of the books. I don't know why. Um, so the first book that I finished during Ribsat was the Rules of Attraction by Brett Easton Ellis. This was a buddy read between me, Penelope, and Sylvia over at Wish Fulfillment. Um, we all started it on September 1st, and Penelope and I finished it last, or the, just the weekend we just had. It is Tuesday, so like Saturday and Sunday. Um, I really liked it. This is an adult novel about a bunch of kids in college, so they're like mid-20s, I guess. And this is an 80s book, so there's a lot of 80s uh, references to music or artists, you know, that sing and stuff. Um, lots of, of 80s brands like Stussy and um, Ray-Bans and, you know, like cassettes. Like stuff that was in the 80s, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but there's a lot of drugs and a lot of sex in this book as well. I gave this book four stars. I love Brett Easton Ellis's writing style. It's so, it's so quick, like fast paced, and it's kind of it's in it's like a mixture of diary format and kind of like telegram format, where it's just like bullets of words and also just normal speak. So it's like the the POV is actually talking to the reader. So like we're in the middle of a conversation so we should already know all about this stuff. And they're giving us like a rundown of their day. Um, so it's it takes a while to get into especially since there are a bunch of POVs in this book. Um, there is a love web, not a triangle because um, Sometimes in schools you just swap boyfriends between friend groups and this is kind of like what happened here at Camden College. So there's Sean Bateman and he's, I guess, this steal of a guy. Everybody wants to be with him, but he's kind of a douchebag. Um, but so there's Sean, who's the main character of like, he's the most wanted. And then there's Paul, who wants Sean. And then Sean wants Lauren, but Lauren wants Victor. And then there's a couple other people that like Sean. And, um, yeah, it's just a bunch of sex, drugs, rock and roll, and deal with it. Um, <laughs> I really liked it. If you like kind of that kind of style of writing, it's a dark contemporary, um, pick it up. And then I also read three graphic novels, the first one being on NetGalley, so it's downloaded onto my computer, but I will leave a picture here, and that uh, graphic novel isn't even out yet. I think it comes out in October, but again, I will leave the date on the screen. Um, the book is called, or the graphic novel is called The Dreadful Fate of Jonathan York, and I really liked it. I gave this uh, graphic novel, I think a three or a four, maybe, maybe. Um, it's about a man who starts walking, like taking a shortcut from where he was to get back home. 
and he cuts through like a swamp but as it gets dark he realizes that he's kind of lost and he doesn't know how to get back out and he meets three travelers on the same path and he follows them to an inn where um, the couple says if you would like to stay here and we'll give you keys to a room as long as you give us a story of your own. It doesn't matter if the story is made up or if it's real. You just have to pay for the room through a story. And each character um, or traveler gives the old couple a story and when it comes time for Jonathan York to give a story he can't think of one and the old man of the inn says well then you can't stay here and kicks him out and Jonathan ends up going along the same trail that's I mean that's basically the entire book uh, Jonathan tries to get to the inn He's not allowed to stay there because he doesn't have a story. And then he goes on an adventure, so he ends up getting a story at the end. And he says in the book that, you know, stories, or not stories, but adventures build character. And it helps me, you make uh, become, like, a better person through, you know, experience and stuff. So if you don't do anything in life or if you don't try new things, you'll never learn anything new. And you'll be boring and you won't have anything as a legacy to live on or to share with others like you know children and grandchildren you, they won't know you basically that was it but I really really enjoyed the illustrations um, very muted color palette but very colorful at the same time if that makes sense so uh, not pastels but kind of it was like really dark um, colors like mauves and lavenders but like a muted so they weren't shiny, but I really enjoyed that, and cross-hatching, and um, very whimsical, kind of like Dr. Seuss-esque um, writing and um, illustrations. So yeah, if you would like to check that out, it's a read now on NetGalley, and I will leave the link down below. And then I also read Skim by Mariko Tamaki and Jillian Tamaki. Now I read this one summer and I didn't like it. I felt it was, why am I so dark? I felt that it was a little boring. I, I just, I really didn't like the topic of, of the, um, of the graphic novel that I read before. And then in this one, I actually enjoy this one. I think I still gave it three stars, maybe four. Um, but there's no color in this one. It's just black and white. But I did enjoy the story. It's about a 16-year-old girl who um, is a little overweight, but it's not a focus in the book, which I enjoyed because as we all are different sizes and shapes, uh, people in graphic novels or any kind of fiction should also be different shapes and not be pointed out as, hey, look at me, I'm a different shape. It's just part of life. And so I enjoy the fact that they really didn't talk about it. Um, her real name is Kim, but her nickname is Skim because she isn't skinny. Um, but that was like the only kind of talk about her weight. And her and her best friend, um, you know, go about high school life like any other teen does. She is writing in her diary so this entire graphic novel is based on diary entries and there's a suicide at the school um, a, a gay boy kills himself uh, they don't know if he kills himself because the boy he liked didn't like him back or what was the reason maybe he just was depressed in general um, but that was mentioned and also Kim is uh, gay and but she doesn't she doesn't actually come out to anybody or talk about it in the book. You just kind of see a picture of her kissing a girl. And so, yeah, there's like, um, like a lost love kind of thing. It's very realistic. Um, I liked the writing because that's pretty much how uh, girls talk. I like the fact that um, Katie, I think, is the other girl in the book. That Katie, you know, kind of became her own uh, individual at the end of the story. And the little princesses that she used to be friends with, I don't know if they're 
cheerleaders or whatnot, but like the popular girls, she kind of like, you know, went away from them because they weren't um, cool. They, they're they fake and she finally realized that after um, her ex-boyfriend killed himself. So very, I, I mean, I don't really know. I don't know. I don't know. I liked it. <laughs> I liked it for the most part. Um, if you like graphic novels, I would check it out. All right, and the very last uh, graphic novel slash manga that I read was The Infernal Devices, which is The Clockwork Angel, book one, um, by Cassandra Clare and this dude or girl. Uh, this pretty much was just like the story. They picked the most important scenes out and emphasized the funny bits and the very dramatic bits. That's what manga usually does so there's a lot of like emotion in the eyes like you can see that she's very like angry or surprised and um that's what they did throughout the entire book so if there was a piece that was uh funny then they would make sure that they kept that and uh it can't be stood out but it was emphasized and I like the fact that, let me find one. Mm. Okay, this is a good example. So you see this drawing here, like this is her normal face and it's very like manga with the big eyes. But then when, when someone is feeling embarrassed or cheeky, like funny, then they always draw them like tiny, like little, little kid characters. See, there's not a lot of striking um, character, like, not characteristics, but like features. Like she's really gorgeous in here, and then she's very doll-like in this one. So in manga, when uh, a character is feeling small, they they draw the characters really doll-like and tiny, like babies. And um, yeah, I don't know. I really I gave it five stars. It did stick to the storyline. Um, the times where I was really angry with um, Will in the original. I was really angry with him in here. It was a fast read. I enjoyed it and I can't wait to pick up Clockwork Prince, which should be coming soon from the library. All right, that was really long and sorry about that. Um, so that was my weekly wrap up. I read four books, Ribsat ends today, but I didn't really finish. Um, Insanity, I'm still reading that one and that was part of my list. Also, Denton Little's Death Date. I started both of them during Ribsat, but I have not finished them yet. So I have to roll that over for this week. So yeah. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I will talk to you soon. Bye!